Hey guys, Jano Zero, how you doing? I hope all is well in YouTube land, or whatever part of the world that you are in. Uh, okay, it's kind of cold and it's kind of rainy, kind of a crappy day, so let's make a cake. Uh, we're going to make a chocolate cake, we're going to do it completely from scratch. Uh, when I was a boy, my, uh, my Aunt Donna used to make this cake for us and I loved it. And when I started to learn how to cook, uh, she showed me how to make it so that I could make it for my kids to enjoy and uh, also for me to enjoy too. So, Alright, let's get into it. Uh, in the mixing bowl right here, I've got uh, two cups of flour, two cups of sugar, two teaspoons of baking soda, four tablespoons of cocoa, and to that we're just going to add a dash of salt. A dash of salt will be just about like that. A dash of salt, toss that in there. So now we're going to just mix this up a little bit like this. Combine all the dry ingredients together and kind of aerate it to get it ready to uh, take and uh, absorb the wet ingredients. I always, uh, when I'm baking, I always keep my wet ingredients and my dry ingredients separately until we're ready to rock and roll. We have our oven, by the way, preheating at 350 degrees. This recipe will make a 13 by 9 inch pan. So if, it's, uh, if you want to make a smaller version, just cut it in half and you'll uh, be able to use an 8 by 8 pan. So, all right, now we've got our dry ingredients combined. To this, we are going to add two eggs. One egg, two eggs. We are going to add two cups of heavy whipping cream. Just like that. And we are going to add two teaspoons, roughly thereabouts, of vanilla. And then we are going to mix to combine. I'm going to go slow so you don't make a big giant mess. Of course, in my opinion, if you're making some really good, good chow, if you don't make a big giant mess, you're doing it wrong. You make a mess. Anyway, here we go. This cake is awesome, by the way, you guys. I mean, I love it. My favorite, my favorite chocolate cake right here. And it's really, really easy. This cake recipe is just doesn't get much easier than this recipe right here. Did I mention it's delicious? Because it is. Alrighty, so we are going to just mix up our batter here until it's wet and all the ingredients are wet and mixed. Yes, you could use a hand mixer for this if that's what you crazy kids are into nowadays, I guess. There we go. Tap out my uh, whisk here. Remix in the, a little bit of dry stuff. If you got a couple of clumps or a little bit of dry spots, it's okay. It'll be just fine. Nice sticky cake batter. So now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this into a 13 by 9 inch greased pan. I just sprayed this with a little bit of uh, non-cooked cooking spray. Put this in here. Mmm, -mm, it already smells good. Put it in, even it out, level it out for even baking. And we are going to put this in a 350 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. We will see what it looks like after 30 minutes. And uh, it's no different than any other cake. You can do the old toothpick or, you know, test where you just poke it in. Your toothpick, if it comes out clean and dry, then your cake is done. So we're going to start it at 30 minutes, and it may take uh, 35 minutes, but we'll see. So now we're just going to pop this in the oven, and we'll see you whenever we pull it out after 30 or 35 minutes. Okay, guys, uh, that whole 30 or 35 minutes thing, yeah, this one took uh, 45, almost 50 minutes to bake all the way through. So depending on your oven, uh, depending on how thick and how big you make it, you just have to use your best judge. Um, so we're going to pull it out of the oven now and set it up here to cool. This will need to cool completely. Uh, completely let it cool to room temperature and then we'll start uh, making some frosting. Uh, if you don't make your own frosting, then uh, once it cools, by all means, go ahead and frost it and enjoy. But here, once this cools down, I'm going to make my own frosting from scratch and I'll show you how to do that too. So, mm-mm, we'll be back in a while. 
Okay, guys, it's been uh, it's been a few hours. Uh, you know, this is one of the things where you can, uh, when your cake is done, go outside, do stuff for a while, come back in. Uh, the cake is completely cooled off. So now we're going to get ready to make our frosting. Um, what you're going to need is a hand beater, uh, a whisk. You want a, an empty sink with uh, ice water in it, uh, really, really as cold as you can get it. Sorry about the mess in the kitchen, but uh, we don't have a studio. We have a kitchen. <laughs> it's, a, it's a kitchen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn uh, our burner on to medium high. In here we have one and two thirds cups of sugar. We have two tablespoons of cocoa. To add to that, we're going to add just a dash of salt. Just a dash. Oh, that's a little much for a dash. There we go. Toss the rest of it over your shoulder for some luck. Woo! -hoo! And we're going to turn this on medium to medium high heat. Now we got that on. We're going to give the sugar and the cocoa and the salt a quick stir to get it all blended up together. Just like that. Now we're going to add one cup of heavy whipping cream. And we're going to give that a mix in. Mix it all together. This is our base for our frosting. Just have the whipping cream, the cocoa, and the sugar. So now what we're going to do is we're going to leave this over the medium, medium high heat. And we're going to bring it to a boil. And we're going to stir it, uh, if not constantly, almost constantly. You don't want this sugar to scorch uh, to the bottom of the pan. You want to keep it moving. Uh, scorched sugar is nasty sugar. So we're going to keep stirring it, and we're going to let the heat do its thing. And uh, once we get to the point to where we're at a boil, we'll go to the next step, and I'll get back with you then. This should take probably four or five minutes. Okay, guys, you can see how the uh, frosting is starting to boil. The cream is getting a little bit frothy. Uh, that's exactly what we want, and we want to uh, let it boil now for about 45 seconds to a minute so that the sugar can cook and do whatever it is that sugar does when it's cooking. Uh, it'll help stiffen up the frosting uh, when we go to start whipping it up. So we're going to just sit here and stir it for a little bit of time just to make sure that it's uh, not scorching to the bottom and that the cream or the sugar is not getting scorched. You can see we are at a full boil and uh, we're just going to stir it up. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to turn the heat off. Now I'm going to add about one teaspoon of vanilla. Mix that in real good. Mm -mm -mm. That smells good. All right. Now we're going to move to the sink. We're going to put the pan into the cold water. We're going to submerge it about halfway, enough to where we can cover the frosting. And we're going to put the mixer on low. If you don't have a hand mixer, by all means, just take a beater and put it in a drill or something, and there you go. Now we're going to just start whipping it up. What we're doing here is we're going to actually whip the cream a little bit that's in there, and it's going to whip, and the sugar's going to hold it all together once it's whipped, and it's going to be chocolatey and delicious. So we're going to whip this up now. We're putting it in the ice water so that it can start cooling off. We want it to start cooling so that it'll set up. As soon as it starts getting thick and starts whipping up, you're going to need to immediately put it onto your cake. Uh, that is why we want our cake to be completely cooled so that it doesn't remelt the frosting. Well, I don't want to bore the crap out of you guys. This will probably take another couple of minutes or so. I'm doing it on, you know, doing it on low speed so I can go slow and take my time. 
and not mess anything up. You can do it by hand, but I mean, you really got to get after it, man, if you're doing it by hand. I mean, you got to get after it and start whipping it. So give me a couple minutes here and I'll get right back with you so we're not bored. Okay, guys, you can see that we've whipped it up. As it starts getting stiff, go ahead and bump up your mixer speed a little bit at a time, but you don't want to go a whole bunch. You don't want it to whip. Uh, if you whip it way too much, then you're going to have mousse, and that's not what we want. We want a more of a fudgy consistency. Now we're going to immediately bring it over here to our cake and start frosting the cake with our delicious chocolatey goodness. We want to get it on when it's uh, still in its runny stage like this because we don't, oops. Like I said, you're not doing it right if you don't make a big mess. Spread it out because it'll start setting up and uh, like frosting is supposed to. Cover the cake and give it a few minutes to set up and then we will do a, a taste test. And hopefully we will make my Aunt Donna proud. Nothing fancy, nothing pretty, but man alive, it is yummy. There we go. There's our frosted chocolate cake. Like I say, we're going to give this a, a few minutes now to go ahead and, and let the frosting rest and set, and uh, then we will cut a piece out and do a taste test. And uh, I'm going to get the first piece because I want to make sure that it's you know, like, not like poison or something, make sure that it's not going to you know, poison the kids or anything. So, <laughs> see you later. Okay guys, uh, we are finished setting it up now. It's been probably, I don't know, 20-25 minutes-ish, somewhere around there. You want to let it set until whenever you tip it, you can rock it back and forth and the frosting doesn't move anymore and it's all set and stable and ready to be cut and eaten. So let's get us a knife out here and cut us a little corner piece and see how well we did. It looks yummy. It looks yummy. Give it a taste. Mm -hmm. That's a good cake, y'all. That is a happy fat guy right there. Mm. So there you have it. There's my uh, my chocolate cake recipe that I'm sharing with everybody. We make it pretty much from stuff that we that we keep uh, on hand and stored here, uh, except for the cream. But if you're near anybody that has a dairy farm. Uh, you can get fresh cream and it'll work just fine uh, and it is yummy so here you have it thanks for watching uh, be sure to check out the friends of the kitchen facebook group i'll leave a link in the, the, the box below and uh, everybody shares recipes and ideas and pictures and good stuff you guys have a great night god bless mm. man buzz buzz the end